the Senate will come to order. Our first order of business is a land acknowledgement. ASG acknowledges with respect the land we are on today is the traditional and ancestral homeland of the Kumeyaay Nation. We recognize the indigenous peoples as original stewards of this land and all the relatives within it. As these words of affirmation, of acknowledgement, are spoken and heard, the ties nations have to their traditional homelands are renewed and reaffirmed. Our next item on the agenda is roll call. The clerk of the Senate will now take roll. Aya Amani here. Ajika Rasu here. Anisa Beckett here. Jolie Beagle here. Chloe Cohen here. Danielle DePinto here. Devin Eater here. Dana Farhu here. Joshua Fangold here. Cece Fletcher here. Chloe Holm here. Anna Janimov here. Gunnar Collin here. Arissa Lalabir, here. Briera Long, here. Malia McKinley, here. Sean Paula, here. Morgan Pang, here. Isabella Sevilla, here. Our next item on the agenda is to approve the agenda for today, November 3rd, 2022. Uh, the student org committee chair. I approve the agenda for November 3rd, 2022. Second. There's a motion on the floor having been seconded to approve the agenda for November 3rd, 2022. Is there any further discussion? Without any further discussion, we will now move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your placards. All those opposed, and any abstentions. Motion passes. The agenda is approved for today. Our next item of business is the approval of the minutes from October 27th, 2022. Do we have any motions? The IDEA Committee Chair. to approve the minutes of the 27th of October, 2022. There's a motion on the floor. I've been seconded to approve the minutes from October 27th, 2022. Is there any further discussion? Without any further discussion, we will now move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your placards. All those opposed, and any abstentions. Motion passes. The minutes from October 27th, 2022 are approved. Our next item of business is raising of questions from members of the public. At this time, any member of the public may raise any immediate question to the body to be addressed later at the final hearing of the public. If there are no immediate questions from members of the public, we will move to a vote. Or right, we will move on to the next agenda item. Our next item of business is report from the Speaker of the Senate. Sorry about technical difficulties. Uh, we will continue, I'll just read them off. Hopefully we can get the Senate back up soon. Um, so happy Senate to you all. Um, this week I have been in conversations with Vice President Johnson um, and can confirm that we will be having the wellness building plans come to Senate on the 17th. So please come with questions. This is a great time to be able to show you like the, the blueprints and how the building's gonna look. Um, so I'm very excited that that is able to happen. Um, I joined the rest, the rest of ASG exec yesterday in meeting with President Harris and VP Michael Lovett Collier on discussing the mission statement uh, for the university and uh, the plans to hopefully 
hopefully implement a new mission statement for the university in the coming months. Uh, this past week, I also appointed new senators with the president. So thank you to the Chief Justice and the Chief of Staff for helping out with the interviews and for all the help that, that has been through. Um, so I'm just very excited to welcome new members to the Senate today. Um, now that we've made it more than halfway through this semester, um, I think it's a great time to mention that we had the time to do research, so hopefully we can start seeing resolutions coming to Senate. Um, we really want to accomplish goals for the students, and this is something that it is you all, uh, all of our work that we need to do, so hopefully we are starting to draft resolutions pretty soon. Um, I'm very, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the Academics Committee for last night being out there in the cold and tabling, so I have a big shout out to the Academics Committee. Um, we will also be assist, I will also be assisting the Chief Justice alongside the President and Vice President on appointing the new Associate Justices for the Judicial Branch as well. Um, this week, I hopefully plan to meet with the Chief of Staff and the Student Life Committee Chair to finalize our talking points for Andre Malley and updates from that will be soon to come. And again, if you have any questions at all, uh, please don't hesitate to ask ASU speaker at San Diego.edu. Thank you. All right, next item is reports from the Senate lead team. Hello everyone, happy Thursday. Um, the Senate lead team, we reviewed two HDBC appeals, one from Pi Sigma Alpha and the other from Biology Club. And then we reviewed and approved the academic <coughs> committee uh, Senate initiative for their meet and greet. Um, and that occurred last night, so I hope it went really well. And then we had um, one-on-ones with senators, so we kind of discussed ways to advance their work that has been um, carried in their committees. And I don't like if I don't have one-on-ones with you and you still need help, please do reach out. We're here for you um, to uh, help you with connections, resources, um, and just a person <coughs> to listen to. And then um, I'm working with PR Chair Kaylee to advertise um, vacant senator positions. So if you know anyone, any colleague or any um, constituents that are interested in um, being a senator, please, please spread the word and um, reach out. Next, we have a vacant position at ASGBC. So um, it's Tuesday during dead hours. Are there any senator interested? Like right now, if you could raise your hand if you're possibly interested, there'd be like free food and you get to vote on student awards. Interested. Okay, I'll note that. Anyone else? There doesn't have to be one person. <laughs> All right, thank you, Sean. Senator Sean. Um, did Chloe yeah. answer his? Yeah. Oh, Senator. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, and then the next thing is, Senators, let's kind of like work on resolutions. We have kind of initiatives down, let's start doing resolutions. And if you have any questions on getting started, or like the template, or what can I do, just please reach out to me, my email's there. Um, but feel free to call or text me as well. Thank you. Our next item of business is reports from the committee chairs and coordinators. Happy Thursday, everyone. Happy to be here with the commission. So, as we already mentioned, the academic committee had our first ever yesterday in our first meeting week with the public and it went really, really well. We got a lot of suggestions which we'll be looking over and on during our next meeting on Monday. We also created an academic committee calendar um, for constituents and anyone else to meet. Meet, uh, schedule meetings, lunch, or make appointments, and the QR code is not a lot. Um, we also have released ASG grant applications, and the flyer will be out soon for the grant applications. If you have any questions about the grants or anything, or anything related to academics committee, please reach out to me and email us at the bottom of the screen. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so, we met with three new clubs this week, which will be voted on next Senate meeting some of the registering clubs and more new, new clubs that we're going to be meeting with. Um, we now have a meeting time set for the rest of the semester. Um, we're working on organizing a student or fall fest. I think we have a date and time. We are coming up with ideas and places to have it. So if anyone has any ideas, please feel free to reach out and let me or someone in the committee know. 
Um, we invited four clubs to come meet with us next week. Those are the USD Robotics Team, Women's Fitness Club, Women's Club Rugby, and German Club. Um, so if anyone has any questions or ideas, feel, please feel free to reach out. Hi everyone. Um, to start, we have met with Jalitza Fonseca to discuss the food pantry and to find ways that we can possibly improve the hours. Um, Senator Chloe has also reached out to Tribal Liaison to see how we can help out as student representatives. Um, she'll be meeting with us soon. Um, and next week is Homelessness Action Week. Um, so this is hosted by <laughs> Urgent Challenges Collective. And uh, I encourage everyone to go because it focuses attention on homelessness and housing security. And there's a lot of um, statistics and details that you probably did not know about. It's very important, especially with like the increase of homelessness in San Diego. Um, and there's a link below if you guys want to know about the events. And if you have any questions, you can email me. Hi everyone, um, I met with Ariela Canizani and the CAs last Thursday and it went really well. Um, I'm going through the feedback uh, that I got and organizing it. Um, I'm continuing to get feedback on the fitness center hours with Senator Josh and the Student Life Committee's initiative for grocery lift coats starts this Sunday, which is November 6th. We're offering free rides for undergraduate students um, all day on Sunday. Um, Pickup would be on campus and drop off is at Westfield Mission Valley. There's a Trader Joe's, a Target, and a couple other stores there. Uh, we're currently working on like getting that um, marketed through the PR chair and making sure that our students know. And I'm looking forward to meeting with the speaker and chief of staff to prepare for on campus pricing conversations. Um, hi everyone. So uh, this past Tuesday, I attended my first SAC meeting, um, which is like the student athlete advisory committee, and I got to introduce myself and share my goals for the semester. Um, there's actually a member of SAC who's also working on a resource catalog, so we're going to be combining our two to kind of you know make it more holistic and maybe um, things a little bit quicker. Also, USD Athletics is doing an attendance competition for home games, um, so all students are invited, and they've invited us to participate in that. So um, you can send out more information later. Also, thank you to Carson Senate Philly and Senator um, Morgan for telling me about the um, men's rugby team and their interest in having a bull pit game. So I have talked to the bull pit about potentially attending that rugby game at the beginning of, I wrote September, but it's supposed to be December. Um, this weekend it is football versus Butler Saturday at 2 p.m. And then looking ahead next week is senior night for football as well as volleyball. Um, that's also the last football home game. And then basketball season also starts next week with men's basketball and women's basketball, basketball both playing at home on Monday. And then um, today I actually got confirmation that I'll be attending the Public Safety Students um, Advisory Committee meeting next week. Hi everyone, so super exciting news is that starting Monday there will be free chlamydia and gonorrhea testing for all USC undergraduate students. And um, that's super exciting. I will be submitting that marketing request soon. Um, and just to let you guys know, some upcoming events with the Wellness Center this week are um, on the 9th. They will be hosting a media literacy and healthy relationship workshop um, based on the lyrics from Taylor Swift's new album, which will be super fun. And there's also going to be a gratitude and well-being event on the 10th. So I hope all of you guys can check those out. Hi guys, uh, I don't have any major updates uh, for you guys this week. I will have some next week other stuff I'm working on, but I met with my advisor and the sustainability club. Um, otherwise, I'll let you know next week. All right, thank you to all. Um, our next item of business is reports from the ASG Executive Board. Hello everyone, happy November. I hope you all have a safe and fun Hello Weekend. Um, so this past Monday I met with um, ABPSA Charlotte Johnson to discuss collecting data regarding programming in the wellness building. 
Um, and so that um, co collection of data is gonna likely start within um, next spring. And so student affairs confirmed that they will be attending on December 8th to discuss further updates. And I forgot to add that they um, finally filled the position for the ABPSL um, and they will be updating um, everyone about that at Senate. So be looking forward to that. Um, I'm organizing student leader lunches with Chief of Staff Amaya, and we were able to select some organizations that we um, want to prioritize for the year, and so we are going to extend those invites to them and invite them to a casual lunch so we can discuss anything that they are needing or needing support with. Um, so next week, I will be sending out a wellness survey, and this is something that I've been working on with VP Connor Nichols to get the pulse on how students feel that their wellness is being supported in their academic life. And then once we have that link, once we review the draft, um, I will have that link available for all of you next week. So please, please encourage your constituents to complete the survey so we have a lot of great data to look to. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and give Connor's updates because he is currently at Faculty Senate. He wants you guys to know that research grants are up and active and you, it, the slides aren't working, but there is a link. So make sure to spread the word and let your constituents know that if they are interested in research grants, they are live. And if you have any questions, to send him an email at asgvicepresident at san diego.edu. Hi everyone. Um, not too much for me, but as mentioned, we're scheduling interviews for the vacant judicial branch positions with President, Vice President, Speaker of Senate. Also, the judicial branch voted yesterday to allocate the remaining seven seats in Senate to be at large positions, so hopefully this will help fill the vacant seats. Thank you. Hi everyone, for me, big day tomorrow. Disneyland tickets will go live at 6 p.m. The link will be on the Instagram bio. I think we're putting it up today, but you won't be able to fill it out until 6 p.m. tomorrow. So just a heads up, there are two ticket options, 105, which includes the ticket and the bus, and then $90 if you wanna self-drive yourself, and you're allowed to sign up for you and another undergraduate friend at USD. If you got tickets to Black Panther 2, the distribution will be next week, and you should have received an email whether you got a ticket or were waitlisted. And then just a few save the dates. We have Winter Wonderland on Tuesday, November 29th at 5 p.m., and then a fall guest speaker on Thursday, December 8th at 7 p.m., and those uh, further details will be announced soon. Thank you, everyone. All right, everyone. So currently, as um, mentioned previously, we're working on filling two ASGBC spots, so from a religious org and special interest. So if you know anyone is interested, um, please have them reach out to post on the Instagram. Um, we, ASGs can make me, so we got the 50,000 extra um, approved last week. However, we're still kind of keeping spending limited just to be keeping with that money. It's just sort of enough to sustain us for the rest of the semester, not really to um, spend much more. But the funding guide will remain most updated for any changes. So if you have any questions about that, that's the best place to look. Um, and we're still working on updating the ASGBC bylaws. And the fun fact is that wombats, which are Australian mammal, have species shaped like little dark cubes. Um, and they're the only known prismatic, <laughs> only known prismatic cubes in the world. Okay, this is student how the intest their intestines form feces, and they actually think that the the fact that they're cube shaped helps like them to mark their territory because it doesn't roll. <laughs> Okay, and the sources are BBC and Science Draft. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Happy November. Some on-campus promotions that are happening. Um, as many have said before me, vacant positions for Senate and ASGBC. Please spread the word. When you see me posting it on Instagram, repost it to your own story. Please send it to a friend, you know? Um, also, grocery lift codes are back and better than ever. Um, and working on those promotions. And then from the marketing committee, if you haven't filled out your Senate intro survey, please do so. Um, I'm gonna ask for the Senate Life Committee and Academics Committee to stay a little bit after we adjourn for a group photo of your committees. It's just gonna be real quick. Um, and then we're doing a Friendsgiving event. 
that is in the works. Senator Gunner is going to reach out to you all on your part in the road skating event. We're also thinking about some winter themed giveaways, so if you have any ideas about that, please reach out to um, anyone on the marketing committee, but Danielle DePinto, Senator Danielle, she will be working on that. Um, and then something that's super important is the marketing request form. I've been getting a lot of requests for different marketing materials. For my sake, please fill it out with a minimum of three days before your event, um, because if not, I'm not going to be able to do it as well as I would like to, um, and possibly not do it at all. So please make sure to do that. If you have any questions, please my email's right there. And that's the gift of the week for these cold San Diego mornings. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, um, like Arissa mentioned, we are just preparing to make sure our conversation with Andre Malley goes well. Um, for office hours, I will be sending an email later today to those who have completed zero to two office hours. Um, at this point, we should have four total submissions. There should be five, but I just disregarded that first week just because I know everyone was getting in the groove of things. Um, so I also will be sharing those names with Speaker of the Senate address and advisors if necessary because there are definitely some that have not done any at all or just one. And these are important for us to know like what you're doing and like be, being able to help you and being up to date with what's going on. So I will have to share those names. Um, these do not take any time at all. So just continue to do them. They're really short. Do them on the last day of your office hours, last 10 minutes, really simple get it done, um, but they are just due on Sunday nights so if you want to wait till Sunday, but if you just do them at the end of your office hours, it's much more efficient use of your time. Um, I will be organizing the student leader lunches with Melissa, <coughs> President Melissa, how she mentioned, and then exec and other multicultural organization student leaders met with President Harris and Vice President for Mission Integration, Michael Levette Coiler. Coiler? Uh, <laughs> Okay, yeah, <laughs> to give info on revising the mission statement. So we'll keep you guys updated on that. Hopefully it's a good, engaging one. And then for the quote of the day, when everything seems to, go, to be going against you, remember that an airplane takes off against the wind and not with it. With, and Henry Ford said that. So I know we're getting really busy. Midterms are coming back up again. Um, a lot of things are getting thrown your way, but we can all do it and we'll finish strong. Thank you to the AAG Exec Board. Uh, we will now move on to new business. Our first item of new business is confirmation vote on the Senate appointments made by the President and me as the Speaker of the Senate. And so then these are the appointments that were made. Uh, Jonathan Martinez as College of Arts and Sciences Senator, Alyssa Weaver as an at-large Senator, and Mia Madari Yaga Yagan as San Buenaventura Senator. Is there any motions? The Student Org Committee Chair. There's a motion on the floor. I've been seconded to approve the um, the appointments made by the President and the Speaker of the Senate. Is there any further discussion? If no further discussion, we will move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your placards. All those opposed? And any abstentions? Motion passes. The appointments are confirmed. All right, now we will be swearing in the newly confirmed senators. So I would like to invite all the newly confirmed senators to come up to the front so we can swear you in. Okay, so uh, I will be reading a couple statements. Uh, just once I give you certain instructions, just follow those. Um, 
So I'll read a quick, brief introduction. Uh, the members of the Associated Student Government at the University of San Diego shall adhere to the highest ethical standards. They shall exercise judgments which are fair, consistent, and equitable. They shall do everything they can to strive for excellence in their goals, adhere to the Constitution and bylaws of the Associated Student Government, and work to achieve the mission of the University of San Diego. I will now read a couple of statements. If you can just re please, please repeat, I will to the end. Uh, will you demonstrate loyalty to the mission and goals of the University of San Diego? I will. <laughs> <laughs> will you act within the Associated Student Government's Constitution and bylaws? I will. Will you be fair and just in the treatment of all, addressing issues and people without prejudice, and maintaining a positive working and learning environment? I will. Will you honor agreements and preserve confidentiality? I will. Will you be honest in and accountable for your actions and statements? I will. Will you demonstrate personal and professional integrity in all matters and respect ASG leaders, administrators, faculty, staff, and students. I will. Will you provide leadership in all your assigned duties? I will. Okay, now, now I will read the oath of office, so I will say a statement and just read it, or say it back after I say the statement. We will be part of a team which seeks to meet student needs. We will be part of the team that seeks to meet student needs. To extend opportunities to all students. To extend opportunities to all students. And to enhance the quality of education. And to enhance the quality of education. Students are offered at USD. Students are offered at USD. We will work with fellow members. We will work with fellow members. Of the Associated Student Government. Of the Associated Student Government. In a spirit of harmony and cooperation. In a spirit of harmony and cooperation. To the best of your ability. To the best of your ability. We will represent and serve. We will represent and serve. The Associated Student Government Body of the University of San Diego. The Associated Student Government Body of the University of San Diego. In all aspects of campus life. In all aspects of campus life. Congratulations and welcome to the team. Applause for a new senator. And now our next item of business is a presentation and vote by ASGBC on a request of over ten thousand dollars for Acha and Mecha. Acha and Mecha are going to present first, and so I welcome them up to the front of the stage. Um, we're presenting on La Virgen de Guadalupe celebration, which is taking place in December. And it's been a tradition here at USD for more than 15 years. 
My name is Rachel Cruz. I am repping Metro today. And I'm Amaya Rodriguez Sahis, and I am repping Acha today. So, who is La Virgen de Guadalupe? So, to understand this event's importance, um, I'll share a little bit about what she means to me. To me, she's always been like a second mother, someone I carry close to my heart. Um, she meant a lot to me growing up because I didn't see a lot of brown representation or POC in the Catholic institution. And I remember when I first heard her story and saw her, I thought she was beautiful and angelic. And she's one of the reasons why I'm so proud to call myself Chicana and brown. So she is a Catholic title of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which is associated with the apparitions of in December in 1531. She is important to Mexican and Mexican Americans, as well as other Latinx folks, and also indigenous people as well. Um, I have some statements from other students of what La Virgen means to them. So La Virgen is more than a complex symbol to me. She embodies unconditional love, community, and resilience she is for the people. And then someone else said, to many people, La Virgen de Guadalupe is a saint and a symbol of faith. But to me, La Virgen is a symbol of community. What is it? Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> symbol of community, feminism, and social justice. She represents power and strength for the marginalized communities who have been historically underrepresented. So I do want to emphasize that she's important to indigenous folks as well. Um, I don't know how familiar you guys are with the story, but um, it involves an Aztec indigenous man, Juan Diego, who sees her for the first time, and she asks him to build a hermitage or a church for her, and that is how the story goes. If you guys have gone to the event in the past, there's a mass which depicts her um, apparition in front of him, and it's really beautiful. So um, this is the Virgen de Guadalupe celebration in the past. Like we've mentioned, it's been 15 plus years. It was actually started by staff here at USD. Um, more staff like the janitors, like the gardeners, the, those people who keep our campus beautiful, who made it possible for us to be the most number one beautiful campus here. Um, so they started it, they wanted to have a piece of home here at USD in their community. And then Mecha also helped, started helping, started engaging, and then it became a bigger event for students, faculty, staff, the community all around USD. Um, so these are a little bit of the celebration components. There's a dinner, a kermes. A kermes is a carnival slash festival that is very popular in Mexico and is celebrated. It brings community together. Um, there's games to play, there's activities to do. It's, it's very fun. Um, there will be performances uh, by Fama, if you guys know who they are. It's Folklorico and Mariachi here at USD. There will be performances by Aztec dancers, which is very important and traditional in our culture. There's also an art exhibition, which Dr. Pulido will be in charge of, and they will be exemplifying what their connection to the Virgen is in the art, so it'll be very beautiful. There's a procession that leads up to the mass. Um, so it's basically a, like a play that occurs, um, but it'll be Juan Diego and the Virgen on this like float and then they'll go and we follow. Um, then there's a mass, a play during the mass that just kind of goes over like the story, the baseline. Um, then the rest presentation to her and then dessert after mass. So there's always around 400, 500 attendees for these activities. And then for the mass, there's about a thousand attendees um, just because that is open to the community. It's open to staff, their family, etc. Um, this is planned by the University Ministry, the UFMC, and other Latinx organizations, which is Mecha, Acha, Fama, APS, and LGSA. Um, so for myself, my personal experience, my sister was here uh, from 2008 to 2012, and then for USD Law, um, and she would always bring me to this event. I feel like it really brought my tie into USD here. Um, I kind of felt like, oh, like, yeah, like, this is a good school, like, I can feel at home here. And it, it was just kind of even more nudging to come here and continue um, her work and then my own work now. Um, so yeah, that's what it means to me. And then, yeah. Um, we broke down the budget into three sections. I'll start off with food. So we do want to have traditional Mexican foods that include tamales, pozole, esquite, and empanadas. Um, on the bottom here, we've broken it down. These 
We're getting the food through USC Dining, and these are their costs. So for students, it's fourteen thirty-four, and then the four hundred is per serving. So we're expecting around four hundred students. Um, I want to emphasize that we're not asking for money for staff, community, or faculty members. We're just asking for money for the students. And the on-site attendance is a fee that is required. I know ASGBC asked us if this was still a rule because of COVID, but we called this morning and that's what they're charging us and it is required to have attendance that can't be students. And then the churros after mass, our tradition. Um, last year they were $500, this year they're 800. So a lot of things have gone up in price and that's just an example of that. And then this is the budget breakdown for entertainment. So the entertainment, like I kind of mentioned earlier, um, is weaved into the entire event as a whole. It creates space for community uh, belong building and recognition. Um, so this year, with hosting Lincoln West, which is the carnival games, Asik Dancers Fama is gonna perform during dinner, art exhibition and mariachi's dinner slash class. <coughs> so we broke down the entertainment fees here. These are the, the budgets or invoices that we received for this. Um, the mariachi, there was an increase since last year. For Aztec dancers, there was an increase by $200 as well. Um, so I know we're all feeling the inflation. It's not just on your end, it's also on our end too, unfortunately. Um, but yes, that's for entertainment. And in the last section, other, um, we want money for the art exhibition, decorations, marketing, and supplies for the procession. Um, so starting with the posters, flyers, and cards. We're asking this because we want to market this event to all students and make sure everyone knows that it's going on on campus. The posters would be money for A-frames and they'd be set up like in front of SLP, um, Copley, and kind of all over campus. The cards is for um, invitations and thank you to departments on campus before and after the event. And the presider stipend, um, UM will be covering that, but it's just required for the mass. And the procession candles and roses are also tradition, so the roses are to present to La Virgen after mass, sort of as, as a thank you, and kind of it's a moment to honor <coughs> her and give her appreciation. And the candles are to light the way from where we're walking to, to the Immaculata, and it's symbolic because um, the light is leading to La Virgen and the church. Okay, so this is just the budget breakdown recap. Um, I'll go over our contributions at, and then our total need. So the grand total is $22,268.90. That is a big amount. Um, we are getting contribution from the university ministry, so from them we're receiving $5,000. This covers mostly class-related <coughs> um, parts of the event, um, which is a presider stipend and anything else that has to do with the mass. Um, the UFMC contribution is $3,000. They will be covering the dinner for staff, faculty, and community members. So we will have wristbands that will cap the number at that. And then at, then we'll just know how many is the ones that they're covering and then we're covering students, et cetera, and yeah, students. Um, and then the ethnic studies slash turning wheel contribution, that is from Dr. Pulido. He actually, um, from his own money, because he believes so deeply in this, um, put $2,500 to cover the locust, local artist honorarium and art supplies, as you can see down there. Um, so yes, we are getting contribution, but that's still not enough. This, is, this event is really, really big, really, really important to the Hispanic community um, here at USD. We really want to emphasize that we want to make this something that is, like for the new student, like now we have 44% of our undergraduate um, students being Hispanic, so we want to give them a place to feel at home that is away from home if they're not from San Diego, so making sure that they're actually belonging in the community and not just being welcomed into the community. Um, so yeah, so our total need will be $11,768.90, which is what we're asking at Bay's GBC. We understand there's not a lot of money, but that, but we just hope that there, we can get at least first. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so some of this stuff you guys may think is like, oh, like they don't need, like they don't need roses, or like they don't need this or that. Um, but it really all ties into the tradition of everything, the cultural aspect. 
like this is like this is what would happen if we were in Mexico City celebrating this, or like if we were in um, the Hispanic countries that celebrate this. Um, so yeah, so they are important, even though they may not seem like it. Okay, so why is this event important? Amaya sort of touched on this, but. This event aligns with the Horizon Project and USC is moving toward being a Hispanic serving institution, which we hope like this event can contribute to that. It's also improving diversity and a sense of belonging. Like Amaya said, this event helps people feel like home, at least it did for me since my freshman year up until my senior year. And it's also helping set the standard for an engaged contemporary Catholic institution. But she also is a cultural symbol as well, not just religious. So you don't have to be Catholic to appreciate her. And community members with strong connections to that evening are celebrating her and those who are unfamiliar are learning about her. So it's increasing cultural awareness on campus. And also, as Amaya said, this event is important for the students, but also the workers that are making USC beautiful. It's for the people who are always tending to the roses and all of the, like, the beautiful trees and plants that we see on campus. The people like that are cleaning the dorms that are never appreciated or talked to. The people at the SLP, like any faculty on campus, like they look forward to this event. I know last year when we were inviting people, we went up to them with roses, some of the staff on campus, and they had told me that they, they never get invited to anything. And this is very, very important to them, as well as students. So, yes. And that concludes. I might as well say thank you <laughs> on behalf of everyone that we're representing. So on behalf of Mecha, Acho, Fama, APS, LGSA, USD Community, University Ministry, UFMC, facilities, faculty, and staff. Thank you for listening to our presentation, and we hope you take what we've said into consideration. Thank you. So this will just be a HGBC's uh, recommendation regarding the request. Uh, we find that sports be the same sort of thing. There is one sort of issue, not necessarily issue, but specificity that brings it up that kind of gives you all a little more flexibility in this request. So. So basically this, the way ASGBC works is there's different categories for requests. So most commonly we'll get a GBM request, which is just like your general club meeting, and then we'll get just an event request, which would just be like a regular event that would happen. There's an additional category, and that category is community outreach event. And so this request was submitted under the community outreach event category. The only information in our funding guide, which is what ASGBC follows for, um, for this specific category is that less than 25% of the to total budget will be awarded towards that. And then as far as like what actually determines a community outreach event, it's kind of just up to our discretion. Looking back on this semester, we haven't been super consistent about what qualifies as a community outreach event or not, so we decided to leave it as such. However, because the community outreach event category has basically no information and our funding guide really doesn't have any information about it, uh, the budget committee decided to just fund this as an event. So it was submitted under one category, but we used guidelines from a different category to fund it. Um, and so that formula is $7 a person um, to a max of $2,000.
However, that maximum was basically re recently instituted to accommodate for the fact that we have a reduced budget and we've never actually used the maximum. And so they decided to kind of ignore the maximum and not use it for the calculation. And then another thing that went in the decision was that it's a yearly event and has a large cultural significance. So AHGBC's recommendation was $3,150 for, uh, for food and entertainment, and that's based off of uh, approximately 450 undergrads are in attendance at $7 each. Um, and once again, that's ignoring the 2000 because it was never enforced, although that is in the funding guide. And then to add to that, or work? Yeah. To add to that as well, the $7 was also, uh, like Ashley said, was changed. Um, it used to be, I believe, $10. Um, so that's also been changed in the past couple weeks. Um, and also, we averaged out the number of expected attendance. They said 400 to 500, so the budget committee decided to be around 450 in the middle. Um, as well as seven dollars is for food and entertainment per the funding guidelines. So we decided that seven dollars um, doesn't matter about the food or entertainment, but seven dollars per person. And that's how the AHGBC got to this decision. Are there any questions about that? Um, so just to be clear for all the new senators, just a reminder for everyone in general. Um, just if you want to speak or ask questions, just raise your placard and we can call on you. And just, you have to wait for me to call you. Um, but now is a good time to discuss the two options, or the options now presented. Um, the sustainability coordinator. Hi. Yeah, um, I was just wondering, do you guys have any, like, recommendations or allotments for things that aren't uh, food or entertainment for events? Because I know they ask for supplies like roses or whatever. Does that have to count as part of food and entertainment? So with that being said, it's like kind of a part of the event. So $7 will include all of that entertainment, food, and like you said, some roses and flowers. That'd be Senator, Mal Senator Malia. All right, so your guys' recommendation in total for us to give them is the like about $3,000? Yeah, that was what um, AHGBC decided on. Um, so that's what they thought that was fair for this event. Um, based off our $7 and how many I would just like to point out also uh, the representation from Hacha Mecha are up there too, so if you want to ask questions to them, you're also welcome to do that. So this is a general questions discussion this time. Senator Devin. Just wanted to ask the representatives from Hacha Mecha. This is a pretty substantial cut from your initial request. So is there like a baseline number that you guys would be happy <coughs> if you want to get to um, that's despite the cut? We do not have a baseline number. Um, we're just hoping to get like as much funds as we can. We do understand the <coughs> lack of funds that there is for ASGBC, and we do understand this is a high number. Um, but like we said, this is a big event. This is very big in significance. Um, so yeah, we don't have a baseline number to like give, but yeah. Um, I would also just like to remind everyone that you don't have to do what Hacha Mecha is doing or what the budget committee is recommending. You all have the final decision of exactly how much you would like to fund. So, I mean, that would take calculations, but just to make sure that, just to reiterate that, that you don't have to take either or. It could be whatever you all decide. Next on stack is at the Academics Committee Chair. So this is a general question. So if you only receive the about 3,000, how would that impact the overall 
what what you you inspire me to do this kind of do. Okay, so we would have to revise numbers. We would have to cut back on a lot of things. We would have to maybe decrease attendance numbers, maybe cap a number of people. I'm not sure how that would really work out. We don't really have to work with it without our advisors and everything. I think we would just offer less food options, like maybe take out empanadas, but keep like pozole. Just like all to move things around. Point of order, the allotted time has expired. Is there any motion? Oh, Senator Devin. I move to extend the allotted time by five minutes or um, 15 minutes. Second. Is there a second? Okay. Um, there's a motion on the floor. I've been seconded to approve 15 extra minutes for the discussion on um, the, AH, uh, the AHEBC request from Acha and Mecha. Is, uh, we will now move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your placards. All those opposed, and any abstentions. Motion passes. 15 more minutes. Uh, next on stack is the Student Life Committee Chair. explain that for you. Um, this is kind of an interesting case because they requested more community outreach and these numbers are based off events. So it was $10 for food and entertainment and now we have to adjust the um, guidelines because we've had a small amount of budget. So now it's $7. So for this specific <coughs> event, $7, I know is not a lot, but we have to make some budget cuts and $7. It's just a weird circumstance because HGBC did kind of fund this as an event instead of a community outreach program. Yeah, on that note, there's not really strong numbers that we Senator Alyssa is next on the staff. Um, I just uh, oh. Thank you. So my main question was, it, from the base of this, it sounds like you aren't charging admission. Is that correct? Okay. Well, I know that you probably don't want to charge admission to staff members as they work very hard and they look forward to this every year and they haven't had to pay admission in the past. I'm thinking so. Maybe people like their families that want to come to this event, they can be charged admission, and you can use money from that to make this event exactly how you want it. And I know that won't cover everything, but you can just charge them five dollars admission from family members of students, but not the students. That can be personal. Sorry, I'll answer this just because it's come up before with like previous events, not in Senate, but just like with an ASGBC and what we've talked about. 
So there's been a talk about like, you know, if you just charge a couple dollars for an event or for, you know, just to be like, they have like chair of gaming, like charge money to like, make it, to lower some of the costs. What we kind of decided as far as our decision making was to not do that because we felt that really disincentivizes people and part of like why we exist as an organization to fund students is to make sure things are accessible to everyone and even just like a small fee would. So if like they're doing it on their own choice, we're fine, but we've never suggested to people just on principle like being equitable that they should charge and like exclude people because <coughs> it's kind of turn a lot of people away. Also something to add to that, also like the student activity fee that is already a charge for students, so I feel like <coughs> having more charges doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. To the idea committee chair. I have a question for uh, ASGPC. Um, so for this to be, um, so I don't understand the reason why this isn't community outreach and more of an event. That's the first thing. And then the other thing, um, is there any possible way that this would be more of a community outreach and not an event? Because it seems to me it's more to be, it should be categorized as community outreach and not an event, because it's not a regular event if you compare it to like other events on campus. Yeah, so this actually is technically categorized as a community outreach event, and we didn't or they didn't choose to reclassify it, so it is under that category. Um, as far as what defines a community outreach event, the our bylaws basically say that we're supposed to define it, and that never really happened, and it didn't really happen at the last meeting, just because at this point in the semester, we realized there was a bit of discrepancy. Um, so we just left it in that category. The reason that we're talking about like community outreach event versus general event is that we didn't really have a formula for funding a community outreach event, and so we used the event formula. But you're right in saying that it is a different category and we're using a funding formula from one category for a different one. So just to clarify, it is a community outreach event. ASGBC sort of just funded as an event. Mike then? Questions, you know. Actually, um, I've been here at USD um, myself now for I think this is my 14th year, and I just want to correct in that this event isn't just 15 years old. We're actually trying to decipher now how old it is, but it is well over 25 years old, in that we have many, many generations of you know community members coming to this event. I personally, I mean, um, this is a huge event, both for students and community members, and I just wanted to say regarding the charging folks to come in, that that, or limiting the number of people who can come in, that can be extremely challenging, because we don't want community members to come, and then all of a sudden be like, sorry, you have to turn around. Um, so I just get a little bit worried and concerned about, you know, doing that because this isn't, it's, you know, uh, I think families of students, like they bring not just the students and the peers, but the little siblings, the grandparents, the parents. Um, so I just kind of wanted to say that um, in that, um, you know, that would really disincentivize people. And I just wanted to clarify that as to how old this event is because we're in the process of trying to figure it out. Uh, but it has been a very long-standing process. And I think regarding cutting events too, and, um, or cutting certain elements of the event, uh, yes, that could, you know, if there is no money, like we would have to do that, but then all of a sudden it's not a celebration in the same, in the same way. So just kind of wanted to clarify that. And unfortunately, it's just everything now is so expensive. I personally cannot believe that this event is so much money, but keep in mind well over a thousand people attend this event. So just wanted to say that. Sustainability, the sustainability coordinator. I see my time. Oh. <coughs> well, 
well, you all have the floor, so. I don't get the card. No, 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 okay. when you're presenting. Um, I just wanted to give um, some announcements as well, like for the budget. So right now we have around $62,000. Um, that's with the $50,000 that was approved by the Senate. So I just wanted to say $62,000 is what we have left this semester, and this does not include the $3,150 or the $11,000. Senator Devin. I, I just wanted to weigh in um, as a member of the budget committee. I think that in this situation, we should do one of two things. The first being, because we are not choosing to cap the event, we are following the guidelines that we were using previous to making those cuts. So we could fund the event at the $10 per person amount that we had previously been, been doing prior to um, the budget cuts, so I think we could do that. That would offer a little bit more funds to um, the event. And I don't think that's going to be a, a, a huge issue for the budget committee, considering that we did receive new funds recently, so that helps out. And then the other option is that we could set a definition for community outreach events on a per person basis, and that could be higher than like the 7 or $10 if we wanted to allocate that way too, because that hasn't yet been defined. So um, I think you know, other senators can weigh in on what we they think that we should do, but I think that um, even if we just went with the uh, guidelines that we were funding by prior to the cuts, it would provide around um, um, $1,200 more, which I'm sure would help out, um, and I don't think it would be detrimental to the budget for the rest of the semester, so that's my personal opinion. The clerk of the Senate, but. Um, okay. Um, I think it's important to try and find a compromise right now between budgeting committee committee and the importance of the event. So I present the idea that we double the amount from seven dollars per person to fourteen dollars per person, which would make it six thousand three hundred dollars in total which would be a lot closer to their original asking amount. Um, so I motion to approve Acha and Mecha $6,300 for their community outreach event. Second. There's a motion on the floor having been seconded to approve the amount of money for Acha and Mecha, the Virgen de Guadalupe Mass, at six thousand three hundred and let's say vertically. Oh, six thousand three hundred. And it was seconded. Is there any further discussion? The health and wellness coordinator. Uh, I kind of just want to know on what basis we determined to double that number because. I would hate to just make this like a random thing and make it unfair for other events. So like on what basis are we choosing to double the number to fourteen? Rather than like another random number again. So I kind of just on that note. Um, one thing to, that is important to consider is that I know we use the event number, but it's still a community outreach event. So if y'all make this decision, it would affect more so that category and how we fund that in the future and not the event category. And if you're worried about people choosing that category just to get more money, we always can choose to reclassify when we fund. So if someone wants to be like, oh, you get more money if it's community outreach, we can still look at that, say, this is an event, not a community outreach event, reclassify it and fund it at that level. So just as I said earlier, it's not really that big of an issue to fund this in a different way, just because we don't really have consistency, it'd be more of an issue if it was classified as an event and we just happen to be funding an event that way when we've been funding events very differently throughout the semester. The President. Hi, I'm 
is it possible that um, Acha Mecha, if you guys could uh, put your PowerPoint back up, or if you could just confirm or deny if this is true? I believe that in um, the outline that you had, that it was actually fourteen dollars per person that you guys had laid out for food. Yeah, that number is correct. It's like fourteen and like some thirty cents. But yeah, I can put the oh she has it here. Fourteen thirty four. So then it wouldn't be a super random number because doubling seven to 14, that's around the amount that they requested per, uh, per person for food. Senator Malia, thanks on the side. Okay, so I don't know if you guys would be able to answer this, um, but I was just wondering about how many events like per semester are at this large of a scale? I'm just trying to like gauge how important or like how many people this <coughs> event will affect in comparison to other community outreach events. Um, I would say that this is like the one event of the year that has the most attendance from like the Latinx clubs, we don't do anything else that has over a thousand people. And like we said, this involves the community too, so it's even bigger than what we think. So yeah, we do have like GBMs, like little events, like we collaborate with TBB sometimes, but nothing is this big and nothing is this community outreaching for our culture and our like engagement. So, um, so if it's request is over ten thousand dollars in comes to the Senate, this is the second one um, this semester. So this is probably the most we've gotten in ASGBC so far for requests. Uh, next on SAC is the Sustainability Coordinator. So my first point I wanted to touch on was to answer kind of Chloe's uh, general ask there on like what a good logic for doubling it uh, could be. I think we could, I see an opportunity to say because it's a community outreach event and community outreach events might need other supplies that aren't just food and entertainment and clearly they do uh, as they mentioned in their breakdown, um, we could provide if we wanted a guideline, we could provide $7 to fund that. Um, and then the second thing was a question uh, for the budget committee people. Um, so you mentioned we have $60,000 left in the semester. Can you maybe give us a breakdown of what that might go towards to, uh, go towards, like based on historic uh, budget or like, will there be money left over in that? Are we gonna use it all? What's that like? Point of order, the allotted time has expired. The idea committee chair. I move to extend the allotted time by 10 minutes. Second. Second. There's a motion on the floor. I've been seconded to extend the allotted time by 10 minutes. We will now move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your placards. All those opposed. Any abstentions? Motion passes. Ten more minutes. The TV chair. Point of order. I, I asked a question. So. Oh. We will continue with the question from the sustainability coordinator. So to answer your questions, I mean, it's kind of hard because we have $62,000. Um, we usually have a $20,000 of requests every week at HGBC, and right now I think we have around six more meetings, seven more meetings. Um, I think two weeks ago we um, allocated around $15,000, and this past week we allocated $6,000 without this request. So that's just to keep in mind. Um, and especially big events start happening, they don't happen now. For some reason, it's hard to like wrap up because at the end of the semester, there's going to be no more big events. Um, but it's kind of hard to answer that question because I'm not too sure. But yeah, very specifically, we don't have requests for big events because people are asking in advance, so like events might be happening, but we can't do them. And that's just our prediction. Like obviously, we could get you know eighty thousand dollars worth of event requests, but it's just more likely that 
add some extra kind of wine then we have these GBMs, maybe some smaller events, but we don't really foresee like a lot of big events that usually would have been requested just because like it takes a lot of planning, you know, if you have the money in advance. <coughs> and also, um, HGBC doesn't only fund events, but we fund GBMs, merchandise, merch, so we fund a lot of different things and this is just one thing that we do fund. So just to keep in mind, we also fund events, GBMs, merchandise um, requests. So it's another only thing that we do fund. The TVB chair. Hi everyone. Um, I just want, with my experience in event planning, I just really do want to emphasize that event pl planning events now are really expensive. And so although we want to double that amount, I would highly encourage you all to think about potentially funding this event in full because Events are very expensive to put on, and with the significance and importance of this event, I really think that the only way to make this event happen is to support them by doing that. And so that's just something I would like to put out on the floor for your thought and consideration. Senator Gunner. Just a reminder for you all, we do have a motion on the floor, so we are discussing that motion, but you know, these are all valid questions, so just in case any of you want to make a motion, we do have a motion on the floor, so. Sorry. Um, do we know how this compares to like funding in the past for this event, um, this figure, like how much money you got in the past from ASGBC? Yes, I don't know the exact number, but last year we were just under 10,000, it might've been like 9,900 but just because we don't want to go through the double steps, but because everything has increased, like the churros, like literally everything, it's been over a thousand, but we're asking for the bare minimum, we're not including other things. Like the roses that we give to the workers, that was not from ASGBC. And then we have, like now knowing like costs and knowing how big this is getting and knowing like the history behind it and like how important it is, we've been like trying or like thinking about maybe asking USD as an institution to fund this and not have to go through HGBC um, because we do understand this is a big amount and like we don't want to take away like from other events but like this is our only option right now and like we do want to get in the works of like getting this as a USD funded event. The athletics coordinator. that I agree with um, funding it in full because going, um, like yes, I understand the inflation of and the effects of making the budget lower $7 from 10, but then on the other side of uh, like the fact that there is inflation and you know, auction factor are actually having to purchase these things, it should, in my opinion, actually be not $14 per person, but probably closer to like 20 because of like the fact that they're even talking about like churros have increased by like $300, like, that being churros, I mean, you can only imagine how much everything else has um, increased in price. I 100% um, agree also the fact that like, saying that we can take out like certain parts of it or, you know, they can change this or charge that, like that's not really fair. And this is like, this does have a lot of like significance, cultural significance and like our community in general. Like we're, we are like, you know, we pride ourselves on being this inclusive and like, like a community that appreciates other cultures and so for us to say that oh it's you know you can get rid of the churros or you can get rid of the flowers like it's fine you can get under budget like that's not really um you know like supporting what we say that we stand for uh senator cc I move to amend the motion to approve Aja Hedges request in full. Second. There's a motion on the floor to amend the main motion to approve Aja Hedges request in full. Is there any further discussion? Senator Devon. I just wanted to say that I do agree that this is a really important event and that funding um, event in full is the optimal outcome, but as a member of ASGBC, I want to provide some context. 
context that we have made substantial cuts to a lot of other events that have been requested recently and um, treating this differently wouldn't be entirely standardized across what we've done historically since um, our budgeting situation. So I just wanted to make sure I was aware of that. The speaker pro tem board. Yeah, I think um, a good point has been brought up, but I think also keeping in mind that this is a yearly event, it doesn't happen that often, and it's not considered GBM and like other events that AHGBC does fund, and so I think this year funding in full would be optimal so that we can um, continue this tradition. And then for the years coming, I think this is a conversation that we can have um, after or create a resolution about how we can create more funds or for uh, John Mecca, create a resolution like we should get an institution-wide funding for that. So those are the actual steps that we can do. Thank you. So if there is, uh, so just a message from the parliamentarian. If you are a member of ACHA or MECHA, you need to abstain from the vote. Uh, just if you're just registered in Toronto boards as the official uh, thing. But otherwise, if there is no further discussion, uh, this is a vote on the amendment of the main motion. So remember, this is not the full approval, it's just agreeing to amend the motion. Uh, we will now move to a vote. All those in favor of amending the motion, please raise your placards. All those opposed? And any abstentions? Motion passes. The motion is amended. So now we have, the main motion is now to approve Achas and Mecha's um, request in full. The idea committee chair. I move to approve the motion to fund. Call the question. Call the question. Did I say that? Yeah. Okay, call the question. Um, do I say or move to? Just call the question. Call the question. Second. Second. Okay, there is a call to question and it has been seconded. We will now move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your placard. All those opposed. And any abstentions. The motion passes. Now we will move to vote on the uh, approval of Meta and Acha's uh, request in full. All those in favor, please raise your placards. All those opposed? And any abstentions? Motion passes. The amount is approved in full. Our next item of business is final hearing of a business, or final business and hearing of the public. At this time, any senator may take from the table any motion previously laid on the table in the meeting the week before, or present urgent business. Any member of the public may voice any concerns to the assembly on non-agenda items. The PR chair. Just a reminder, if I could get um, all the members of the Student Life Committee and the Academics Committee to stay after we adjourn, just to take a quick group pick for each of your committees, that'd be great. Thank you. Yes. Um, thank you, Amanda. And for all of our newly appointed senators, um, if you will also join me outside, I will take your headshots. Um, and also, uh, for the newly appointed senators, whichever comes first, if you take the pictures or not, just come meet me after so we can discuss about a couple of things so we can get you situated. Um, also, because we had the discussion about Mecha's and Ancha's request, this pushed the Strengths Finder presentation to a later date. 
So that will be happening at some other time right now. I don't know exactly the date that will be, but I'm sorry, that's gonna have to come later. So, um, but I think it was helpful that we did have this discussion in full as well. So, um, and then we have, um, and then we have the student org committee chair. Next, so. I move to adjourn the meeting. Second. There's a motion on the floor to adjourn today's meeting. We will now move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your placards. All those opposed, and any abstentions. Senate is adjourned.